I got a quick question for you. Do you feel like you're in control of your Google account? Do you know what's happening in the background? Do you know what you have control over as far as your relationship with Google and what you don't have control over as far as your relationship with Google? I suspect that you don't really have a good, clear idea. So today, let's try and take a look at getting control of our Google account on Dottotech. <laughs> Daughter here. How the heck you doing this fine day? If we were to classify our relationship with Google in Facebook as a, in Facebook, if Google was our friend, I think we would say that our relationship is complicated. Is it not? While we all appreciate the free services and the free incredible technology that Google gives us at our fingertips, we also recognize the price to be paid for that is a lot of our personal information, is a lot of our privacy. If anything is free, then we are the product, correct? So we are going to today take a look at what we can do within our Google account, what should we should be aware of within our Google account so that we can gain at least a measure of control over our relationship with Google, at least getting us on a somewhat even footing. So let's dive into things. I'm going to hit on what I think are the most important aspects of our Google account and the things that we have a measure of control over. Now you can get into your Google account, into the management area of your Google account in several ways, but the easiest way is to just click on your profile picture and say, manage your Google account. This will bring you into the myaccount.google.com, which is your homepage for everything related to your account. Down the left-hand side here, we have a navigation menu, and in the center, we can it, Google tries to help us uh, by anticipating what it is we might be interested in and giving us access to that pretty quickly. Now, before you start diving into all of the different switches and the bells and whistles inside of your account, if you are really interested in learning more and gaining more control than I'm going to share with you today, if you go here into the learn more area, a lot of people never do this. But Google actually goes through a lot of effort to explain to us exactly what they're doing. I know it often doesn't feel that way, but if you go in here, you can find all of Google's support documents that talk to you a lot about our main concerns as far as managing our Google account. So this is well worth poking around and spending a little bit of time in. But I'm going to show with you now what I consider are the kind of the most important areas that I think you should be touching on. Now, as we get into this, you'll recognize that Google has access to the exact same uh, controls through several different menus, depending on what you're doing at that particular time. So don't be confused if you're used to going to do something one way and I'm showing you a different way. I'm just going to walk through the main settings here uh, so that me, to make sure that I can touch on the things that I think are most important. And we're going to begin with data and privacy, which is probably number one on most of our issues or most of our uh, most of our plates. In this area here, where you can go in and you can set all of your privacy settings, including your history settings. This is a really important part of set protecting your privacy. Google tracks everything we do. When you're in your Google account, if you've given Google permission to track you what you're doing, they are going to track everything. And I do mean everything in your account. They're going to track what you do on the web, what you search for, what you look at, what you watch on YouTube, and location history. This is something that a lot of people miss. If you have Google turned on on your smartphone, if you have your Google account, if you're accessing it on your smartphone because you're using Gmail, or you're using Google Calendar, if you have location services turned on, Google is tracking where you are going all the time and storing that location information here in location history. We actually have a really good video on this, which I will share with you that you can check out if you want to dive deep into this. But make sure that you've gone in here and if you aren't comfortable with Google tracking your location and keeping a record of everywhere you are, make sure that you've paused it. You can get fairly granular control, turning it on and off, and you can go back into your history and you can delete things from your history should you choose to. But it's really well worth spending a little bit of time understanding what's happening in your location history as a first step towards getting real control over your Google account. There are other really kind of interesting things that we probably don't realize we have control over, such as allowing Google to do ad personalization in to watch what we're doing online and to personalize the ads which are being sent to us. Now, I can understand why you might have an issue with Google personalizing your ads because it does seem rather invasive, but I would vastly prefer Google sending me ads of stuff that I'm actually interested in rather than just Russian brides or something like that. So the... 
<laughs> you want to set your settings here, you can go in, have a look at exactly how Google decides, and then decide whether decides what ads you're getting, and then decide whether or not it's something that works for you. The other thing that's really important that I wanted to share with you in the data and privacy menu is downloading and deleting your data. This is something we get a lot of questions about. This is an incredibly powerful feature that's built into your Google account that many people do not know about. We have something called Google Takeout and Google Takeout will allow you to download everything that Google has recorded on you so you can get a record yourself and store locally all of the different things that Google is tracking. And this is an eye-opening browse, I can promise you that. If you go in here, you'll see that Google is collecting information from all of these different areas. Now, how Google Takeout works is you can choose to download the information to your computer. Things like for calendars, for example, it'll allow you to select which of your calendars you want to download if you don't want to download all of your calendars. And when it says multiple formats, it'll tell us that it'll download it usually into HTML or JSON format, which are some standard data interchange formats so that you can import the data into other applications if you download it and you want to use that information in another area. But you can see that they've got all all of our contacts. This is how you download all of your all of your contact information into vCard if you want to set up a different contact manager. Going through, you'll also find Google Photos, which is one of the things that most people are most interested in downloading. So you can choose exactly what formats you're going to download your photos in here, and you can choose exactly which of your photo albums you want to include in the download. Now, you should be aware that when you download information like this from Google, depending on how much information you're downloading, it can take up to a couple of days for Google to get all of the information together. So what will happen is it's not an instant download where you'll click download and then get it into your into your download folder. Instead, what'll happen is once you order your download, Google will compress the information and compile it because it can be a lot of data. And then they will send you an email with a download link so that you can download it later. But this Google Takeout is a really, really important, uh, uh, it's an important uh, feature that we should know about in order for us to get control of our Google account. Next, I want to go into the security menu. And the security menu is an area that you should definitely be familiar with. Inside of the security area, you set your passwords. You set up two-step verification if you want to have it turned on. Now, two-step verification is one of the biggest uh, features that you can add to your account to protect your account from theft or from your account being hacked. What two-step verification does is it sets up a second factor, a second, uh, a second action that has to happen in order for you to access your account. Typically speaking, you'll get a text to your phone or you'll have an application on your phone that generates a code. So when you try and log in to your account, you have to then enter this code as a second factor in order to access the account. This protects you in case somebody hacks your account, gets access to your username and email address, and, and sorry, username and password, but they still can't get into your account if they don't have that second factor, which is tied usually to your cell phone. It is a terrific way to protect your privacy. And we also have several videos on how to set it up. We use an application called Google Authenticator or a different authenticator app. We have videos on how to do that so you can check them out if you're interested in learning more. So that's set in the security settings. But the thing that I really wanted to talk to you most about in the security settings is for you to go in that you set up your recovery information. One of the most searched for terms in Google when you're talking about Google stuff is how do I recover my Google password? How do I recover my Google account? People lose their passwords. They lose their account all the time. Sometimes it's you haven't used an account for several months and you switch devices and you forgot to write down what your password is or maybe even what your username is and people go through a lot of effort trying to recover their account. So make sure that you spend time here going into the verification area so that if you do lose access to your account, you can recover it. It is possible for you to have a legitimate Google account that you lose that you forget the password for or you forget the username and you are unable to recover because you don't have proper verification set up. And this can be a tragedy, especially if you've got a lot of photos in there that you can then never get access to again. And it does happen where, and Google doesn't help you. If they can't verify it's you, 
they won't give you access to the account. So this is something that you should definitely spend time in. Go into your Google account, go under the security settings, and make sure that you've got proper verification set up so that you can recover your password or you can recover your account in the future should you need to. There's two other areas inside of the security settings that I want to talk to you about that I don't think people look at very often, and that is our devices and third-party apps. First of all, our devices. We set up and we authorize different devices to access our Google account, our computers, our smartphones, our Google Assistant, our smart, our home, our Google Home devices. You can go in here and you can take a look at all of the different devices that you've authorized to access your Google account over the years. And chances are, if you've upgraded your phone over the years or you've added things like Google Home, you're gonna have quite a few different items in here. And when they're old items, say computers that you don't use anymore or that you've sold or gotten rid of, you can go in and you can see that this particular Mac I haven't used in 20, 146 days. That's my old computer. And so what I can do here is I can actually remove this device so that it doesn't, it can't access this, this account anymore. Now, chances are that, I, of course, I formatted the hard drive before I got rid of the account, uh, before I got rid of the computer. So it's not really able to access the account, but it's a nice safety check. It's a nice kind of insurance policy to remove these devices if you aren't gonna be using them anymore and if they shouldn't have access to the account. One other area here is third-party apps. We often give other applications access to our Google account to be able to sign in, to get access to our contacts, our calendar, for a variety of different reasons. Here's all of the different apps that I have given permission to access my personal Google account. And so you see here Zapier, that's uh, that's understood. Snagit, access to my Google Drive for capturing images. Mixmax, which I use as a CRM, as a personal CRM. But there's also some tools in here that I don't use anymore. I use, I use CoSchedule for quite a while, but I don't use it anymore. It's a tool that I've decided I'm not using anymore. Now I've removed, I've, I've canceled my account, but I'm gonna, just to be safe, I'm gonna remove access here as well. So you can go through and you can make sure that the only uh, applications which can access your personal information in Google are applications that you're currently using and you know have access to your Google account. This is a really important long-term security measure that we should all take control of inside of our Google account. We can't leave the security tab yet because down here at the bottom, we have password manager. Now this will allow us to control the passwords that we store inside of our browser. You know how when you enter a password for a site, for a secure site, and the Google Chrome browser says, would you like me to save this password for you? I don't recommend that you use their services to save your passwords, that you use Google's password manager, but many people do because of the convenience. We recommend here that you use a third-party password manager, something like LastPass or 1Password or KeePass. But if you have, or just for convenience sake, you have quickly saved a password in Google Password Manager, you should make sure that you understand where you control it. And this is where you go in to change all of the settings as far as any passwords that you have saved inside of your Google account, especially inside of the Chrome browser. So this is where you can go to change those, to delete them. And if you do decide to use a third party password manager, make sure you go in here and clean your passwords out of Google so they aren't just floating around and sitting there and you forget that you actually have some valuable passwords stored inside of your Google account. So the password manager is the last area of security that I wanna to talk to you about today but I think you should still spend more time exploring the entire security settings area inside of your Google account. The last area that we're gonna go into is payments and subscriptions. And here I have the same kind of issues that I have with storing your passwords inside of your Google account. You have to be very careful about storing your computer, your, your your credit card information, and other uh, and other key financial information like that inside of your Google account. Now, if you've got two pass, if, if you've got two factor authentication turned on, and you feel you have good security hygiene, then it's a convenience to have things like credit card numbers stored inside of your Google account. That's all managed here inside of this area called payments and subscriptions. So if you want to use Google Pay, if you want to use, uh, have automatically filling in your credit card information, this is where you go to manage that inside 
of your Google account. For a lot of people, it's a mystery. They've entered their credit card once, they clicked on a button that said, yes, save my information, and now all of a sudden, every time they go to buy something, their credit card information automatically gets filled in. And that can be a little bit freaky. This is where you go to take control of that. I said off the top of today's video that our relationship with Google is complicated. We have trouble trusting Google because they're such a huge organization and it is really difficult to communicate directly with anybody inside of Google. That's something that we know. So we feel we're dealing with really a monolithic organization that information just flows one way into. But I believe Google does want us to feel we have a measure of control over our Google account. Otherwise, people will trust will con continuously be eroded. And trust Google needs to us to trust them at least to a certain extent in order for their entire business model to work. So I believe that gaining a measure of control over your Google account, at least going through all of the menus and understanding what you have an option to control and what is beyond your control is a really healthy exercise that we should all do. Do you agree? I would love to throw this into your lap now and have you tell me in comments whether or not you feel you're in control of your Google account. If this video helped, terrific. If it did, then I would really appreciate you liking and sharing this video with others. And of course, a subscribe would also be greatly appreciated. But I look forward to your comments and how you feel uh, your relationship with Google is going, as complicated as that may be. With that, thanks so much for spending time with us today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And before we leave, I have one last invitation for you. Every week here at Dottotech, we host a weekly tutorial webinar called Webinar Wednesday, where we explore some aspect of content creation or productivity. You are invited. They are absolutely free, and I think you will find them enlightening. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.